so hi everyone today we'll try to understand what are evolutionary algorithms and when we will try also try to understand one of the most popular evolutionary algorithm called as genetic evolutionary algorithm in machine learning so let's get started so first of all let's try to remember one of the most famous concepts by charles darwin that is survival of the fittest that i guess you must have read somewhere in your biology classes in your school so related to the survival of the fittest theory is the idea of evolution so let's get started let's try understand these two concepts so survival of the fittest basically describes that uh, the individuals that are best adaptive to the environment are able to survive and the rest of the individuals just die out or extinct so for example many plant species many animal species extinct over the past decade like dinosaurs dodo because they were not able to um, adapt to the changing environments so uh, even the idea of evolution is related to uh, somewhat related to this concept of survival of the fittest so let's understand what is the idea of evolution the individuals who adapt the best to the environment survives so coming from survival of the fittest theory now the individuals who are left who are able to uh, adapt to the environment breed to give birth to their descendants their children now these children have some core characteristics of their parents as well as certain new features so something very similar to what happens in humans also so uh, when uh, a couple has a child so it inherits certain characteristic of both the parents as well as some new characteristics as well so some mutation the descendant level has happened as well mutation means certain slight changes from the core characteristics now these descendants are called as evolved version of their parents are more suited for the environment so this is the whole idea of evolution and the uh, theory of survival of the fittest but now this was a lot of biology let's come back to technology how this idea of evolution gives the birth to evolutionary algorithm now this sounds a bit weird like how we are able to connect biology with a uh, technology that with uh, machine learning so let's understand how evolution idea of evolution is getting used in machine learning so in a basic machine learning algorithm that we have studied so far like beat neural networks logic regression linear regression what we are doing is that we take a model initially and over the period of time we train it so that we are improving that model uh, by training it again and again with sample data set now a very big limitation with this approach is that your loss function has to be differentiable so if you know uh, how are we updating weights in these models is that uh, we first of all calculate a loss function like a prediction made by the model and the actual predictions then try to calculate the loss function and then uh, taking its first derivative we are trying to calculate the gradient descent by how much we should increase or decrease the weight for the next iteration right and this training is very very time consuming so i think if you have ever got a chance to train any nlp models so, so you already know ki how long it takes to train uh, text models alongside computer vision models as well and normal data sets tabular data sets also it requires a lot of time so there are two major limitations now if let's change uh, let's have a change of perspectives so uh, from since the beginning of data science we have we know that we take a model we need to improve that now let's change a few things uh, assume that we start off with multiple models right uh, then uh, we don't train these models and uh, straight away we try we get the results on the validation data set or some sample data set now depending upon the performance of the models that we have got uh, assume that like uh, if we have taken a huge pool of models say 2000 models with uh, with each of the model having different parameters different parameters like different weights so it it would be the case that out of these 2000 models at least one or two would be performing very well right because we have taken 2000 samples now you if you make it even a bigger number 2 lakh models you have taken so just assume that there would be a set of models that would be performing very good there would be a set of models that would be performing average and there would be a set of models that are performing very poorly so it's more it would be a normal bell shaped curve that we would be getting where most of the models would be performing an average results alongside they would on the tail we would be having best and the worst performing models now if we take up the best models and cross breed these models to uh, to form the descendants and then again follow the whole approach like uh, assume that we took the top 10 models and eventually we cross breed these models i will tell you how what do we, what, what do i mean by cross breeding these models and eventually i try to generate their children with certain level of mutation as well i will tell you everything you what i mean by mutation in this case now this new descendants becomes a population and again we perform the same activity uh, we have generated two lakh de descendants, and eventually, uh, that ha that I have a mix of uh, weights or parameters coming from the parents with slight mutations, and eventually 
we will be again picking up the best 10 n models from this population and then again cross breeding again generating a population again picking up best n models again uh, cross breeding to perform new descendants until unless the performance has started to become saturated that means the whole population that we have got in the end is giving uh, more or less the same results right so you understand my point we take a pool of models initialized by random weights uh, or random parameters uh, then we directly calculate metrics over some sample data set depending upon the performance we are uh, selecting best n models assume that for now now using these n models we will be cross breeding these models to perform new models to get new models uh, by new models i would mean weights new weights for the same model and eventually using this new population we are again repeating the whole cycle until and unless the whole population the metrics that we are getting are quite similar for all the members so if you know if, like if you understand this whole approach there are multiple things that we have overcome then the traditional method of uh, training a model like we don't require a loss function straight away we are just using the metrics no gradient descent is required to update weights right hence these models are also called as uh, gradient free algorithms apart from that we uh, the training time can be very low because when you train a model the training time is way larger than the inference time that means getting predictions from the model so it can be the case that in most of the cases this would be very fast so there are a few doubts i think that you must have like what do we mean by cross breeding and all so let's understand what do you mean by a mutation in case in terms of machine learning algorithm so in biology so we understood ki what is mutation what is cross breeding here let's understand so we will try to explain genetic evolutionary algorithm one of the most popular algorithm with an example so assume that we selected a model family that is say neural networks with the same architecture right and call it family x now uh, we have the same architecture that means we have the same set of weights as well uh, the dimension of the weights remains the same now initialize multiple models from this family x with different sets of parameters and weights uh, now it dependent upon you how you are generating these new weights like it can be random you you might be uh, populating from different distributions that is your case that is your choice now these weights can be taken as an allies for population in evolution theory so uh, what we were doing is that uh, in the population we are selecting the uh, best individuals who are able to adapt here what we would be doing that we are initially uh, we are having different weights and then depending upon the metrics that we calculate we will be selecting n models dependent upon those weights right say uh, we get the metrics for each of the models say the metrics that we get are 82% 80% 20 30 60 50 40 f1 score is like that assume it to be classification problem so uh, do remember that we are not training these models it's a straight away inference results that we've got now following an epsilon greedy policy so epsilon greedy policy is something that we use in reinforcement learning as well uh, where like depending upon the random value that we have generated uh, at times we are taking a random decision and at times we are taking a greedy decision greedy decision means the best model that is performing so assume that uh, following the epsilon greedy policy we selected n models out of uh, the seven uh, Population, uh, population members that we have so we go, we selected models 80% 82% 30% 60% so you, you can see that 30% is also present because of the epsilon greedy policy some randomness is present i will tell you why we are following epsilon greedy and not greedy policy now breed these models to generate descendants now what is breeding so by breeding we mean that we are trying to mix and match weights from different models for example model 1 has parameters 1 2 3 4 these are the weights just assume that and model 2 has weights 5 6 7 8 now the new set of weights that we can generate is 1, 2, 7, 8. Here you can see the first half is from the first model, second half is from the second model. 1, 6, 7, 4. Uh, first, element, uh, first, element, first weight is from the first model, 6, 7 is from uh, the second model and, eight is, uh, and 4 is again from the first model. 5, 2, 3, 8. Likewise, we can have multiple permutations. Now do note that we are not changing the position of the element. So if 1 is present at index 1, it would be present at index 1 only. In this case, we will be maintaining their indexes but we will be mix and matching with different models and we would be mix and matching these weights here you can see a very clear example if given 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 7 is the different weights from different models how we are able to generate multiple permutations now these would be called as the descendants of the original parents who are able to perform well on the previous data or on the previous pop in the in the previous environment now this becomes a population we will be again recalculating the metrics using these weights now and then choosing out the best n models following the epsilon greedy policy 
the cycle continues until the whole population matrix are almost similar so when we can see that uh, all the population that we are, the, all the descendants are giving us almost the same result then we mean that uh, we have reached a saturation point and hence we can take the best model out of the final population group uh, eventually which can be used for uh, deployment purposes so here you can see that we haven't trained anything we, we don't require gradient descent we don't require loss function it's a very simple permutation combination uh, problem where what we are doing is that we're trying to generate multiple samples and then trying out whichever is performing well we are trying to uh, we are generate we are cross matching their weights and then again regenerating a population so the whole cycle is pretty easy so uh, i have mentioned why we need epsilon grid as i told you earlier uh, this is done because we need to maintain diversity of weights so that we don't uh, converge to a local minima so it can be the case that uh, out of the 10 uh, out of the seven models that we uh, selected all if we are, if all of them are greedy models best performing metrics it can be the case that we miss out on a model which may perform even better but was not part of the population so we need to maintain the diversity in the uh, population that we are selecting as well and what is mutation so mutation is nothing but adding random noise so that we can make slight changes from the core characteristics i think this the whole idea is pretty much similar to what we what happens in the theory of evolution so uh, we are taking the core characteristics but with slight changes uh, giving it uh, its own individuality